Hey guys, Rory here from Your Golf Travel. Uh, I've just got home from work. Um, I've started packing, so I'm flying to Italy tomorrow. Um, pleasure, not business this time, which will be quite nice. Got a friend's wedding up near Rome. Uh, it's PGA Championship week, Quail Hollow. Uh, lots of top players heading into this tournament in really great form. Should be a good major. Um, for some reason, the PGA Championship is kind of deemed the runt of the litter when it comes to major championships. Obviously, the others are all very special in their own right. Um, the Masters hosted at Augusta every year, that's a special place. Uh, the Open Championship is a little bit different because it's obviously some of the only Lynx golf we get to see these top boys playing year in, year out. Um, and the US Open is billed as the toughest test in golf and it kind of stands out from the pack as well. So let's get talking about the PGA Championship this week at Coel Hollow. It is dinner time though, so I'm slapping a steak on and I'm having it with some chips and some onion rings. Yeah, I'm so health conscious. So we're going to talk about a few different aspects of this week's PGA Championship. First of all, the old classic, uh, we're all going to pick who's going to win. Uh, so post your comments down below on who you think will claim the fourth major of the year. I'm going to go with Rory McIlroy. I know a lot of people are thinking Jordan Spieth might do it. He's heading into this event hoping to complete the career Grand Slam, so winning all four different majors. Obviously not in the same calendar year, but over the course of his career. Um, become, if he does do it, he'll become the fifth man in the history of golf to do it. So that's going to be pretty special if he does. And the reason why I've gone for Rory is he's got a really good record at uh, Quail Hollow in general on the PGA Tour. He won his first PGA Tour event there. He went birdie mental on the last day. I think he shot 61 to pip someone on the last hole, so that was pretty awesome. And apart from one solitary missed cut, uh, he's never finished outside the top 10 on this course uh, with a couple of wins and a load of top fives. We've heard from Rory for a few weeks now that he feels his game is close and there is evidence of that. He's played well at the Open Championship, he played well at Firestone last week and if some putts start dropping, which is always the case with Rory, he'll be pretty tough to beat. So as I said, this year's PGA Championship is at Quail Hollow Golf Club. Um, you, some of you will have seen this golf course before because it used to host uh, the Wells Fargo Championship on the PGA Tour. Uh, I think it's hosted that since 2003. Um, always deemed as one of the hardest courses on tour, so it's going to be interesting to see how the PGA set the course up this week. Uh, and as I touched on a minute ago, and it's been mentioned by others, uh, Mark Crossfield, for instance, mentioned it in his daily vlog the other day. Right, the PGA, the US PGA, PGA Championship. One of the things that I always think is quite interesting with this event is it doesn't have an identity, does it? It like has names and people kind of don't even know what to call it. Certainly us UK people as well, where it gets such little televised, kind of over the years it's just not been on the telly really at all. Like we just don't connect with the event. We don't know what to call it. We don't know what it stands for that much. And we never really get to see it over the years. Sky broadcasts it now, so you've got to pay to watch it, which makes a proportion of people watch it a bit more. This year the BBC have got it, which I think will help expose it to more people. But out of all of the majors, it has, I think, the biggest identity crisis, which makes it harder for people to connect with it, keeping it down at that fourth most popular major, or least popular. Great point, partner. So as I alluded to earlier, um, there's a strong contingent that think that the PGA Championship struggles for its own identity, and I do tend to agree with that. Um, it's to me, it kind of strikes as a just a run-of-the-mill PGA Tour event. Uh, that's not a bad thing. I enjoy watching the PGA Tour every week, but um, it doesn't stand out from the pack as much as the other three majors do. Um, so one thing that they came up with a few years back, I think I believe it was 2013, when it was uh, suggested that the PGA Championship might start going overseas and touring the world, kind of thing. For instance, in 2013, I think Royal Port Rush was touted as a potential venue. Um, there's a, other places in the world it could go, Asia, uh, Australasia, places like that, uh, which would obviously shed some light on golf in other areas of the world which we don't typically see on mainstream TV week in, week out. Um, I don't really understand that, it's the PGA of America, um, so I, I personally think it should stay in the United States. So that's the next thing we want you guys to post comments about. Do you think that the PGA Championship could ever leave America? Um, if it did, where would it go? Which courses do you think should host it if it was going to travel around the world? 
or do you think maybe that it could just have a different format, not just 72 hole stroke play like the other majors? Uh, could it be match play? Could it be stable, for instance, who knows? We just want to know how you think the PGA Championship could differentiate itself from the other majors, or even if it needs to, if you think it's good as it is, let us know that as well. The other thing I wanted to talk about is a couple of things the PGA Championship has done this year to, uh, and to be fair, that this has kind of differentiated itself from the other majors and other golf tournaments. Um, first of all, it allowed shorts in practice rounds. God forbid people wear some shorts, right? Oh, Matt, they're quite white, aren't they? Look how thin they are. Yeah. You got, look how brown mine are. Mm. Oh, you look wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look right. Wrong. Um, guys. Have you, got, have you got cream on yet? Yeah. Oh, filming, we're filming. <laughs> um, so let us know what you think about that. Do male professionals need to be allowed to wear shorts all the time and in tournament rounds? Uh, the girls get to wear them. Um, and let us know your thoughts on dress codes in general in golf. Is it a barrier for people playing? And then the final thing which has been flying around social media over the last few days is the fact that it will be broadcast on the BBC uh, now. It's not going to be broadcast on the main channels, I don't think. It will be available via the red button, via iPlayer, things like that. Um, and lots of people would argue that's a sign of golf moving forward, uh, which golf is historically not done. Um, so let us know what you think about that. Should it have just remained on Sky? Will it have an impact on participation? It probably won't, um, but it might get a few more casual viewers involved and you never know, it might inspire a few youngsters to take up the game. Either way, I'll see you guys next week for more Out of Bounds with me, YTT Rory. Because as it stands, that's the time. I still haven't started packing yet and I'm leaving for Gatwick at 3am. I have not thought this through. <laughs>